All right. All right. I think I'm live right now. What's up, YouTube? I just got in my PCBs from All PCB for the controller for the new flamethrower. Check it out. I guess it's <laughs> it's up there anyway. Um, but yeah, this is the new control board that's going to be controlling the new flamethrower, which I pretty much like just finished building. This monstrosity here has its uh, tank in right now. But I got them in. I also happened to get in all my like components, so I figured I would just make a video of populating it up. So... I almost right off the bat realized that I made a mistake and I made this footprint right here for the um, like main microcontroller way too big. And I don't know how I did that. I thought I was like right on the money with it, but I didn't. I got, um, I'm using a 32U4. And the reason for that is I didn't want to deal with like an FTDI chip to program it. And I didn't want to deal with like an FTDI, like a, one of these guys. Um, to program it, I guess it's probably easier to show here. One of the little FTDI like programmer guys, because it's just a pain to have to worry about keeping one around, and it's a lot easier if I can just plug into the board. Plus, I think it looks cooler, <laughs> just like objectively. So, and you can see here my stupidity in picking a footprint is just like super not accurate. Oh, that is heartbreaking. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like tack it down with some glue and then do some really jank like <laughs> wiring pin to pin because I don't have time to order a new board and i'm pretty sure digikey does not um they don't have that footprint for a 32 4 i don't know if they even make it in that so i'm just gonna roll the punches learn my lesson i don't spend nearly enough time looking at my footprints clearly because this is not the first time this has happened so yeah that's that's a real shame but i got a lot of other fun stuff i'm gonna populate so that's good <clears throat> I also decided like, I really like picking like a standard that whenever I have to do a design or something, I just always go with that standard. So like recently I've been all about 440 screws. Like if I'm gonna put something that needs like a heat set insert or I need some fastener that's like relatively small, I just default to having 440 and I have all kinds of 440 in stock. And I know off the top of my head, the pass through di diameter and the heat set insert diameter so if I can just memorize, where do I pull my passives? If I can just memorize like that one standard, it just makes it a lot easier. So I don't have to like keep checking back with one of them. Oh, my bag of passives. So that's one of them. And then the second thing, the second um, standard that I'm working on trying to do is 0805s. So I'm just trying to make it so that it's like, I always have the same, uh, the same size. So like if I just buy like a, a kit of, resistors and they're just all 0805s. I usually don't design something that's small enough that warrants a 603. Granted, I just really started doing PCB design myself. Um, there they are, rock and roll. So I don't think it's like super <laughs> necessary. I go down to like, God forbid, 402s or whatever. So I think I'm just gonna stick with this standard. These these are still pretty small, especially if I don't pick the hand soldering footprint in KiCad, like it's really not a huge deal. All right, so enough of chit chat here. I'm gonna start getting some of these pull-ups on. So I wasn't really quite sure what I want the UX to be for this board when I was making it. Honestly, I still don't really know 100%. Um, but what I do know is having more IO is better than not. If I'm gonna pin myself down with a design of a circuit board, I might as well make it like as robust and have as much stuff as possible. So, all right, back at Saturday. So I just added um, like three switches. I don't really know what I'm necessarily gonna like map them to, but it's better to have more than to, than to have too few. So I'm just gonna populate them and then I'll worry about it in the UI later. Also up here is gonna be like a little I squared C display. So all my like output's gonna be on that. So i am got nice diverse um, options for how I want things to look. Oh, I guess that this really isn't necessary. Tinning these, well, I guess it doesn't really have enough metal on it. And also like, gosh, what a difference it is to have lead in solder. I didn't really think it would matter that much. 
But if you buy like a consumer grade, like piece of electronics that needs to be ROHS uh, certified and you try and like desolder that thing, it is so difficult. Like you have to keep your iron on that thing for forever to get it to come free. But as soon as you add like a little bit of leaded solder, whoop, it just goes like instantly liquid. So, oh my God, I love lead solder. I'm so glad that like for consumer grade products that need to be like truly lead free, it's all automated. Cause like having leaded solder is such a, a dream. All right. I really do like the hand soldering pads for surface mount stuff. Like there's just such a good space for a gusset. I know it takes up like twice as much space, but you know, that is just really pretty. I'm a fan of that. All right. Yeah. Oh, so speaking of standards, another awesome standard that I'm like super jazzed about now is the Molex um, SL family of like connectors. It's just like, if you just buy every kind of SL connector that they have and you need one, you just like have a standard and it's a 0.1 inch spacing. So it's like the same as normal pin headers. They're like interchangeable. Oh, they're the best. I got turned on to them at work. We use them for all kinds of stuff. It's these guys. Actually, it's probably easier here. So they're these like awesome little 0.1 inch spacing connectors and they have a little latching mechanism. So, oh, I don't have the male ones here. Uh, I forgot to order those, but they have like a little latch that holds them in place. Oh man, they're just like the absolute best. And like, it's, it's also like another thing I've learned at work recently is like, it's so much better to connectorize stuff if you can. Like, it's great to solder stuff directly if you're just prototyping something and like, it's not, and it's like not a lot of parts and you just want to throw it together quickly. But if you've got um, like stuff that might break or like a lot of components all working together, it's so much better to just like throw a connector on and it's ultimately like a dollar fifty in parts and it's so worth it. If like something breaks, you just unplug it or like you need to take parts apart, you just unplug that sucker and you're off to the races. And uh, it also just looks so professional to have a tether like that. I just really, I like the look of it. It's better to do it right and maybe have it be um, a little more expensive and take a little more time. But then like down the road, if stuff goes wrong, oh, it makes it so much easier. Especially if you really want to get cheeky, you can make another one <laughs> and then just have that connector, uh, like another module in case something breaks actually sticks up a lot um, and then have another one you can just plug in just in case all right so let me see I, I like messed up a lot of stuff on this board I, I did not <laughs> I did not think this through nearly enough but like some things that I messed up like stupid little stuff like this right here is actually a Pololu uh, five volt buck converter from down from the lipo and like the holes are like a little too small like I made the footprint from scratch and like I can't fit like a normal pin through it. So like just dumb crap like that. Um, oh yeah, like my diodes for the, the kickback on the solenoid, like I completely did not do that right. So I kind of have to bodge that a little bit, but that shouldn't be too big of a deal. It will work. It's just not going to be as pretty as I'd like. <laughs> it's not working as perfectly intended. But you know what? That's okay. Yeah, see, like these will go through here. I doubt they're gonna. I guess I could really try and persuade them. I guess that's all I really need. I can just remove the. Oh, there we go. Nice. Okay, sweet, 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 sweet. That's awesome. Oops. All right, rock and roll. Looks good. Gosh, like I'm so glad that I just decided to, instead of like trying to make this uh, buck converter myself on the PCB, gosh, sometimes it's just so much easier to buy like a $6 module, put the footprint on there and like not have to worry about it. That's why like, I love the fact that electronics can so easily be modularized. Like Seed Studio does that. They have like that standard like JST connector and anything you buy, you can just like connect together. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. I don't, I haven't bought a lot of stuff from them. Um, but it's just like the standard pinout. 
do like standards. Everything's really nice. All right, that's tacked in place now. Oh, this is so exciting. It's all coming together. Oh, you know what? I didn't even check to see what it looks like on the flamethrower. Okay, so it's going to go right here. <laughs> check it out. That looks so kick-ass. <laughs> oh, man. The whole black theme. Definitely worth the extra few bucks. <laughs> Rock and roll. Oh, man, that is so awesome. Oh, man, I can't wait for this thing to be done. Originally, when I was working on, like, designing this thing, I was thinking about doing a, um, like, having removable magnetic panels. So right now it's all open. It looks, like, super exoskeleton -y. But what I'd love to do at some point is to do, like, a whole bunch of bondoed panels that are all smooth and, like, painted nice, clean matte black with decals or whatever. But the panels have magnets in them, and I can just... I'll just like pop them off and on. Oh, that would be so awesome. That's just so much CAD. And also it's like an artistic thing. And I'm not, that's not my forte. Well, it's not as much my forte. Like I can do hard edge model making as Adam Savage says all day, but like sculpting and like doing like pretty things. It's a little harder for me. I'm at least less intuitive. I don't think I'm as naturally good at it. All right, we have a power module. So the bottom part. I've been trying to like find a setup for doing reflow if I wanna like make a bunch of boards. And originally I had the, um, what's it called? Like a toaster oven that I was thinking about using, but I read this article um, from the SparkFun blog and they were talking about like, they get like a hot plate and then a pan and then they put some sand in the pan and that will, oh, I don't actually, they didn't do that. I read that somewhere else, but they pretty much just like use a hot plate and they kind of like cook this PCB sitting in the hot plate, but sand apparently like heats more evenly. You don't get like colder hot spots. Um, but I thought that was like a pretty awesome idea. And I already had a hot plate and um, a pan that I use for making like a rocket fuel, like the sugar and potassium nitrate based like model rocket fuel. So I, I think I'm going to toss my toaster oven, unless it's like, I don't know, really not mu much better, but it doesn't really seem like it to me. Oh, I didn't solder the bottom of this. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, that, that is pretty cool. A little flash of green in there. Oh, I wonder, uh, I wish I got my buttons too. Should have gotten these. Oh, here's an example. This is an example of the uh, Molex. So here's the mill part. So it's got like this awesome little like clicky that will hold it in. And then it will just like snap in like that. And then this can go into your board. So this is for the servo. This will go over here. But like, how nice is that? And if I want to take it out, like let's say the board dies you know, or like I blow the board or my servo dies or whatever. I just unplug this little thing and everything else is completely untouched. Ooh, I love modularization. It's the best. All right, what was I going to do next? Buttons, 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 buttons. Oh, micro USB. That is like the most annoying thing to solder. I hate soldering micro USB connectors. They're so tiny, even when I'm reflowing them. They're just unpleasant. I don't like doing it. So, oh, that's my slide switch that is underrated for current. I really messed up my footprint game on this. There are my switches. Okay. Awesome. Oh, yeah, these are nice. These are better than the other ones I was going to get. Oh, yeah. Gosh, now at this point, if I get a single footprint that matches, I'm just like taking it as a win. Yeah, that's so sick. Oh, 
this is never going to get old. Like designing your own PCB and then especially getting it back from the board shop. Like it's cool to mill it, but once you get it back professionally made, oh, there's just nothing cooler. Like here, where's, yeah. This is the first, uh, one of the first glow tie ones that I made, the like light up bow tie thing. This one has a dead LED and it's only half of it lights up. But gosh, like milling this out and like soldering all the parts on and checking it to like see if it works and all that. Just the absolute most satisfying thing in the world. I don't know why, what about like PCBs is more satisfying to me than like, I guess if I like ordered a part from Proto Labs, like if I got like a really nice aluminum milled part that I had catted, like that would also be pretty satisfying. It might be that like I always considered PCBs to be like this crazy unattainable thing that I would just never understand. So then to be able to like actually play the game is so cool. <laughs> Yeah, these are nice. They got a good feel. I just hope, actually, that shouldn't be a problem. I was a little worried that, like, pressing down on this button while it's kind of mounted to my arm may, like, torque the whole thing a little bit. But one, it's pretty strong. And two, I have, like, the kink in my elbow to kind of provide um, a restraint from rotation around these axes. Like, I have the whole structure on my upper arm to keep the whole thing from kind of twisting around the axes of my forearm. I'm really stoked about how comfortable it is too. I was I, on, let's see, what's today? Monday, so two days ago on Saturday, I pretty much cruised the whole day and built like this whole thing. I had all the pretty much all the CAD done, but I am so stoked about how comfortable it is. I can move around, like it hurts a little bit on my neck, the uh, strap, but I'll put like something soft on there so it's not killing me. But everything else is pretty, pretty awesome. I feel like I could probably wear it for like at least a couple hours at a time, especially if I had a strap. But I'm think I'm thinking at Maker Fair I'll probably only end up doing like I don't know. Last time I brought a flamethrower, it was like 20 minute demos, maybe not even. Um, it's like not tremendously long amount of time. So I won't be wearing it a ton. And I also want to go explore. Like New York Maker Fair is better than Christmas. This is my absolute favorite day of the year. And it's cool, like, there are some people that I only ever see at Maker Faire. And those people, like, when Maker Faire comes around, I know it's time to see that specific group. Oh, those look super crooked. Oh, well. Moving on. Probably should attack them all first. And Justin. And it's so crazy to me too, like how cheap this was. I spent like thirty dollars and change, um, and I got five custom circuit boards in like, oh god, what was the turn on? Like five or six days. In less than a week, I had a test run of a board for like thirty dollars. That blows me away that you can do that. Oh, maybe I should use my tweezers. That is just so cool. And that's all, like, I've heard a lot of arguments from people saying that it's, like, not worth the million on boards because, oh, you can just, you know, spend $30 and, like, get them shopped out. And while that is true, sometimes you want to test it right there. Or sometimes you just need, like, a little breakout for, like, a really tiny surface mount component. Or even like, okay, so, well, I guess you could mill a board for that. But I don't know. Like sometimes you just want to dive into it, I guess. Also, if you have a milling machine, that also enables you to do a lot of other stuff. Etching, I guess, maybe would be super worth all the, all the time. Like buying a dedicated printer to do the, was it laser jet or whatever the process is to do it? <laughs> oh, man. That's so cool. Testing on the forearm. Oh man, this is awesome. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> oh my God, I cannot wait to get this thing booted up. The screen's gonna come on and like programming the little UI and all that jazz. <laughs> oh man, that is just the bee's knees. All right, time to solder on this crystal. <clears throat> 
And then I have like a bunch of really weird capacitance value um, capacitors for this thing, 22 picofarads or something. And it's also, is it 22 pico? No. I forget what, what specific that is. But then there's also like 22 ohm resistors between the um, uh, the data lines on the USB to the 32U4. So, okay, I did not, I, I relied heavily on the Adafruit, um, oh gosh, what is it? They're t not a teensy. It's like their, their five volt 32 U4 board. I forget what it is, but I relied really heavily on their design for that. Cause I've, I guess like I can read the data sheet, but it takes me so long to pluck through all of the requirements for a chip. But if I just see how Adafruit did it and I can see like, okay, these pins are irrelevant. Okay. I can tie all these to five volts. You know, this is the resistor value that needs to go here. It just makes it so much easier. And oh man, I just so appreciate the fact that they are so beautifully open source and I can just dive in and do that. There's no polarity on this, right? One side looks like it's tabbed, but so we're gonna find out. I'm pretty sure it isn't. I'm like pretty sure it isn't, but that doesn't really mean anything, does it? I was pretty sure I had all my footprints right. Okay. I didn't even check to see if, like, the PCB thing was working out. Okay, crystal. Awesome. I think you can use the internal crystal, too, just on the 32 4 I'm pretty sure most of them have an internal crystal. But I'm potentially, so right here I have a little pinout for um, uh, NeoPixel LEDs, and I, like, those need a really specific timing, and I'm pretty sure if you just use the internal oscillator on the chip, it's like not, it can't keep it accurately enough to talk to the NeoPixels. So I figured it is worth the component just in case I end up wanting to actually uh, uh, talk to those. Also, like, I guess like a PWM for the servo is not, doesn't have to be like really, really precise, but still, like, that's the right way to do it. I'm pretty sure they had that on the Adafruit one. Yeah, they did. They had a crystal on the Adafruit PCB. So, like, eh. You know, better to do it right the first time than to do it wrong the first time and then, like, have to go back and change it. All right. Rock and roll. I'm going to do the micro USB jack now. Oh, man. This thing's going to be controlling fire. I cannot wait for that. It's going to be so cool. Okay, so this uh, four-pin jack right here goes out with that connector I was talking about earlier to the palm. And the palm's actually going to have its own PCB as well. And on that, oh, man, I don't know what it's called, but it's like a navigational switch that SparkFun sells, you can click it up, down, and in, and that's gonna be mounted on the PCB right where my thumb is. So when I'm shooting fire from my palm, I can just kind of with my thumb wiggle this little joystick and that's gonna control how much gas is coming out, toggling whether or not I'm in like gas mode. Um, I, I guess that was from the last version. I need to kind of rethink how I want the UX to go. Like when I press which button, like I know one of them should be the taser to ignite the fire. So when I click into gas and the first time it opens gas, the microcontroller will automatically know, okay, I'm putting out gas that is not lit. So I'm going to just taser for like two seconds or something like that. I got to figure out how long it's necessary. And then it, it I was going to add a flame sensor. So it knew that if it went out, it could just like taser itself back into ignition. But I looked around and like most of them are really just like IR sensors and I'm going to be doing this outside. So I'm pretty sure that's not going to work at all. <laughs> so I didn't bother including that. Um, I think what I'm going to do instead is just like press one of these buttons when I need to taser it or like to add electricity to ignite the gas. So I'll probably just make one of these buttons to start the taser. One of them, um, I, I don't know what the other two will be. These may be like navigational for a menu on the little screen. Still got to figure that out. But I do have up, down and in on my hand. So I think up and down obviously will be more fire and less fire. And in I think will be toggling the solenoid valve. So on the back, actually I have it right here. So this is the actual flamethrower part here. On the back, I've got the solenoid valve, and this is pretty much like the, the e-stop. So in case something goes wrong, if all power is cut, this thing just instantly closes and all gas stops. And then up here, the servo, uh, this is what like will control how much gas is um, coming out. There's like a, a little dial that's doing that. So the up and down on the hand will probably move the servo and then clicking in and out will disengage this. So that's like an emergency stop. If like something's not right or whatever, I can just tap that and it'll just close right up. Um, I was also, when I was applying to the Maker Faire uh, 
of putting in the Maker Fair application, it, one of their questions is like, is there fire in your demo? And I was like, yeah, there's fire in my demo. And then they're like, oh, you need to fill out this whole fire safety thing, which I did before. I knew this was coming. But I had to fill out this like whole document about all my fire safety concerns. And like last time I went to Maker Fair and I brought a flamethrower, I had I had to talk with like three. No, there were five of them, I think. There were technically like five U.S. fire for fire marshals um, for the state of New York City. <laughs> so I had to like they were all there at Maker Fair and I had to like show them my flamethrower and like get them to sign off on the thing. To be honest, I'm surprised they did because that thing was spooky. But this is like, this is much more legit. There's like actual safety involved here. I'm bringing a fire extinguisher. I'm gonna have one of my friends there just kind of keeping an eye on me and making sure that like everything works out well and he'll actually have the fire extinguisher. And I didn't put it on the PCB, but I'll probably add it in a wire somewhere. I'm gonna do like an emergency stop, like a, a pull, and that's just gonna disconnect the battery. So when that disconnects, not only does that disconnect the taser, um, in case maybe it's zapping me for some reason, if there's a short anywhere, I'm being very careful about that, but just in case, um, and also in case like fires coming out, it will also close the solenoid valve. So if something goes wrong at all, I just pull this key, like on a treadmill, you clip that thing in your shirt. If you fall, it like kills the treadmill. It's going to be pretty much like that. Um, so if anything goes wrong, I can just like pull this little key, uh, right out of the forearm and like everything stops, like all fires close instantly, no taser, no electricity, it's just dead. Um, so I think that's going to be a pretty good thing for them um, that they'll like to see. I did on the last one, I had like a, what's it called? Like a dead man switch. So I had a buddy behind me. He was my roommate at the time, Nick Farrell. And he was uh, he was back there with like a little wire with a button. And if something went wrong, he could just like let go. And disconnecting the button would, um, that would just like kill power too. That did the same thing with the solar valve. But I don't have that in this one. So we'll see about how that goes. All right, I think I actually may want to wait to do this one until I have, um, I can take this to work with the microscope. All right, so I'm gonna wait on the micro USB because that thing is just so hard to do. These really are difficult. I should get a stencil. I've never like tried doing that before, but I feel like that would be great. Oh, spam caller. Yeah, I would, I would absolutely love to give that a try and see how well that works out. It looks like it's pretty reliable. Like it's, I've been watching a ton of videos about it lately. And it seems like it's a pretty cool option. Yeah, and so one of the things I'm a little concerned about, oh, didn't I get a, oh, I did get a different kind of these too. I wanna check for those. Um, one of the things I'm kind of concerned about is like when you plug in the USB cable to this micro USB jack, it's five volt rail is the same five volt rail coming out of the big beefy five volt, you can't see that. Uh, this guy, the Pololu step down. So, in, and that's really, the only reason that's there is to drive the servo, which is probably gonna take a fair bit of current and also the taser, which I, it doesn't take too much, but it, I mean, it, it definitely takes some, it's mostly a voltage, you know, step up. It's not really about current, um, but either way, if, if I also don't have a battery plugged into this buck converter, then it's gonna pull all that five volt power from my computer. <laughs> So I need to make sure that like at all times that I plug into like reprogram or debug over the serial port or whatever, I have like a battery plugged into it because otherwise I have a great chance of just messing up my USB jack, which I don't want to do. All right, so these are micro USB connectors that have little pins that go into the holes. The other ones that I was using were, there's my footprint. Uh, the other ones that I was using were just kind of like rounded on the bottom and they didn't have actual tabs that went through the PCB. But I like these in case the footprint does work because it's going to hold itself in place while I try and solder these just like ridiculously tiny little leads. Look at these little goobers. Uh, it's not focused. There you go. That's a little better. No, it's not. I'm just kidding. Yeah, they're like crazy, crazy tiny. But it's all good. All right, let's see if this fits here. I need to be so stoked if this fits in. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, okay, that's fantastic. Oh, I'm definitely gonna use these from now on. Oh, that's great. Okay, cool. Never mind. I am gonna solve this. I forgot I ordered these. Awesome. I think so far I have not dropped too much money on this project, or at least this version. I've spent a lot of money on the whole thing. But like the PCBs were 30 bucks. 
you know, this was like twenty dollars with shipping from Pololu for the buck converter. The electronics, the sort of electronics were like thirty, forty dollars. The aluminum was like, I don't know, twenty, three D printed parts, assorted servos and stuff. Like it has not been a lot. Come on, baby. I also keep my iron, I think, way too hot. So this should be too quick. Come on, dude. I believe in you. All right, sweet. Rock and roll. Yeah, I love these uh, ones with the pins that go through the board. And also, like, okay, so on the other versions of the glow tie, I don't know if I haven't put a video about this on my YouTube channel, but I have this thing that I've been building called the glow tie. And this one, this one's like <laughs> one of the boards is broken, but it's essentially, or excuse me, not the boards. One of the LEDs is broken, but it's a, a bow tie that has an ESP 8266 on it. And when you turn it on, it puts out its own Wi-Fi hotspot and you can connect to it with your phone and change like the pattern and the color of the lights and all that stuff. Uh, this is like super old. This is from months ago. I have like nice finished, PCBs and all that stuff. I'll grab one before the end of this. But I used uh, the old kind of um, micro USB jacks, which are like, I'm afraid that they're going to pop off because the only thing holding it onto the board is just like the solder pad. And every time you plug it in and unplug it, like there's no mechanical connection to the board. It's just all soldered on top, which scares the bejesus out of me. I, every time I plug it in, I'm like afraid. So I really should start using these. Or maybe I should just step it up to mini USB, which is honestly my favorite. I love that that jack. That's what's on the nanos. And it's just so like, there's no wiggle in it. I don't feel like I'm gonna break the thing off. That's a great jack. But USB-C, that thing, I have that on my phone. Every time I plug something into it, it feels like it's not a good connection. It just wobbles so much and I'm, I'm afraid of that jack. Okay, that looks pretty good. Just looking at my uh, mechanical connection there. Sweet. Oh, I should also test the, um, let me see, where's my, I'm going to get one of the uh, the screens. Hardware. Models. Here we go. Okay. So let's see if the screen fits. This is what I should have done first thing, is just like check and make sure that my footprints all match up. Okay, here we go. So I got one of the the screens. This is just like a cheap Banggood. I think this was literally like $2. <laughs> okay, that's the ground core and my foot pinouts, right? Oh yeah. Look at that. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, this looks like a real thing. Gosh. That is awesome. That looks so sick. Man, this is never going to get old. <laughs> Hot damn. I should add a little spacer here so it's uh, it's not just kind of loosey-goosey. Wow, that is so cool. <laughs> oh, man, I can't wait to throw some code on this. That is just going to make it so awesome. All right, cool. That's good to know that that fits. Wow, that really made it for me. Seeing the screen on there, yeah, that's that is just cool. <laughs> that is just awesome. Cool. All right, you know what I am going to do is I'm going to wait for the the little leads on micro USB because that freaks me out a little bit. We don't want to do that without the microscope. What we can do is some more passives. I have a whole bunch of like pull up and pull down resistors that I got to pop on here. And I have like some capacitors I need to throw on as well. I'm probably only going to stream for like another like 10 minutes. I don't want to like make, this is like my first pass at this. So I just kind of want to give it a whirl and like see how it goes. Oh, that's a 470. There we go. There's a pull up. So these two right here are, um, those are the 22 ohm resistors going to the data lines, the, uh, excuse me, the USB lines on the 32 four. These guys, all these four are, oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay, yeah, there's only three here. So 
on this four pin jack, one of them is ground and the rest are like signal lines for buttons. And that's for the hand thing, the clicky, the clicky guy up, down and in. So these three are all 10 Ks. This guy here is a 470 for this LED, which is just a power LED. It's like a red power LED. All right, cool. So I can get going on that. I'm just gonna get all these guys going. At work, I had to populate like 10 of these boards. They're like, I don't know, maybe four times the size of this in terms of like surface area. Um, and I got to design the board too, which was super cool. Like that was such an awesome experience. But yeah, I like, I spent a lot of good time populating those boards and like learning, <laughs> apparently not enough because I still can't do it right, but learning what like I should be doing in, uh, in board design, like uh, trace width and like how much current's going through it. That was like a huge thing I didn't think about. And apparently there's like this really awesome uh, calculator. I used it for a couple other boards. But it will, wow, I'm having a hard time this one. Um, but what it will do is it will uh, tell you, like, based on how what voltage and how much current you're expecting it to go through there, it'll tell you, like, in what ounce copper, like, thickness you have on your board, what to, um, how wide to make it trace. So there's no, like, like it, you just plug it in and you get your answer. And then that's what you put in the computer, which is very nice. Okay, that's better. Much. Oh man, I'm still so bummed about this footprint. That really bums me out. It would have been great to just plop it on and just solder that sucker in. Okay. Give me a 10K. Give me a 10K. Cool. Gosh. And it was so unbelievably tiny. Okay, there's three. All right, let me solder these in and then call it a day for the stream at least. I'll probably keep cruising on the on the board. I, you know what, like also in retrospect, I should have added like um, on one of my spare GPIOs, I probably should have added a, um, just like a LED, like a lot of Arduinos, they'll have it on pin 13. Just so you, it's like a, if you upload Blink, you can just see if things are working. Like it's such an easy test and it costs like three cents in parts. Definitely should have done that. I guess I have the screen, but like even then that's still, um, that's relying on I ITC to get that to work. So, yeah if you got that. All right. So I'm going to call it after this. Looks like about 80% of my stuff fits, which is <laughs> not great, <laughs> but I just need to spend more time looking at my footprints in the future before I just pull the trigger and buy boards. But yeah, this thing is going to be awesome, especially with where I put that screen. When that screen is in there, gosh, that just, here it is. It just looks so cool. And then when it's like, controlling like fire being shot out of my palm. Oh, that is going to be so awesome. All right. All right. I'm going to call it. I'm going to keep cruising on this. Get really into the weeds on um, <laughs> doing all the little tiny wiring connections for my incorrectly sized uh, footprint, but that should be fun. But yeah, cool. All right. I'm going to sign off here if I can figure out how to do it. All right. Adios.